I feel like it is pretty easy for me to get girls to talk to girls to escalate with with women whenever I drink, right? Like have two, three drinks and then go out, warm up. I feel like I could I could get close to women, I can hold their hands, etc. But if I don't drink any alcohol, I completely don't know how to get into that sexual zone. I just got back from this fiery little town, this fiery little ski town in Austria. And there's lots of Brits and lots of Dutch and lots of Italians walking around drunk. What else is new when it comes to holiday destinations? And there was different kinds of drunks, I noticed. There, were, there was one drunk who was what I would call happy. And, uh, and when I say that, I mean fundamentally happy. The kind of person... And how I know what he might be like when he's not drunk is something that I, I won't get into, um, nor would it be easy to explain. Um, but a happy person who's drunk, and when he's drunk, he is just like an extension of his nature, of his, uh, of his real contentment. And then you had the drunk who was boisterous in a particular kind of way that was an opportunity. You could see it was his chance to be something that he doesn't normally allow, him, allow himself to be, okay? So it's this kind of binary. And, and we've talked about this before. Are you the person, the same person when you're drunk and when you're not drunk? In the first place, the personality does change. And if you haven't thought about this, give it a thought. Your personality does change. The way you think in fact, even some aspects of the way you link ideas is more free because you're not caught up in your head in such a way that you need to stagger or uh, organize your thoughts. They just flow better. Of course, there's a limit when you're flowing and you start drooling and nothing makes sense, right? In any case, the personality does change. And for this reason, people who particularly don't like their personality and want to change it can use alcohol or do tend to use alcohol. Then we get to the deeper question of what are we going to do about this? Those who are not happy with who they are, right? And what does it mean? And are we really using alcohol to get closer? Are we using alcohol to avoid getting closer? because it's so scary to get close. So in this short video, which is really just a, a preliminary talk with a student before we go into specific non-duality exercises, conversation exercises, and embodiment exercises that are designed to help him understand his own avoidance patterns, right? If you can be yourself anytime, then you get to connect in ways without having to deal with your own fears. So that's what we're going for here. The alternative is that you need to drink. So that's what this video is about. It's, as I say, only a preliminary uh, talk before he and I got to the exercises, which include role play models, my assistants, female assistants that I work with, embodiment exercises, getting into your body, and uh, understanding your avoidance pattern through countering your uh, your fear pattern so you can realize that you're actually okay despite your greatest fears. But that takes getting used to, and that's a process, and one needs to be guided into that in the correct way. Okay, so here's a short little video. If it speaks to you, great. Um, if there's more that you need to understand, well, yeah, those three exercises are critical. You know, we can hear a billion things. You can watch a billion videos about seduction. But until you're practicing, until you're really challenging yourself, then uh, it's uh, only stimulating the brain to take action. Okay, so when you're ready to take action, 
It's always the time. Now is always the time. The way that you're sort of disassociated when you get drunk and you just start to behave in a way that's just like, I don't give a shit and like saying anything, asking everything, being very tangential and kind of like nonchalant, you know, just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. That's actually, you actually have that quality when you're sober. You're just kind of like, so what do you do? She's like, oh, and she yeah. says, oh, I work here. She's like, oh, and you like it? Like you have this kind of, drunk almost blase quality mm -hmm. that i think that you do partially because you're a happy guy and that's really cool and partially because you're resisting getting intimate with her getting yeah it could be it could be you're just kind of being nonchalant but it's lacking um empathy it's lacking depth it's lacking connection it's just sort of you're doing your own thing so while you're on the one hand beginning to become curious there's still an aspect of you that's really keeping a distance and playing in a world of indifference or blase nonchalance which is not a good thing and it is a good thing it's not a good thing because you're not overly vigilant worrying about everything you say and the same yeah. thing with alcohol it creates that buffer of safety so for you, real curiosity, and that means asking her the questions, but as you're finding out about her, really try to get more into the nuance of why she likes something. And not just to say, why, why do you like that? You know, not why, what, how. Infer things and read things. She's like, yeah, I've been working here for a while. You know, I've been working at the, this hotel for a while. And I, and then ask her like a, a question that's legitimate in relation to that. Do you do you find the, the tourists drive you crazy? You know, or the staff, do you feel like very overwhelmed by the staff? You can't do anything, there's a lot of rules. Do you find there's a lot of rules? Things that like, and then she, so she, that's what you were talking about with her to some extent. But then you go deeper and you ask her, are you, what would you do if you could change this? And, um, you know, I was always the kind of guy who couldn't be working at a desk. I had to be working with people. Is this job something that you that you were really drawn to? And you're doing a lot of that, but the way that you're doing it, I can actually feel the space between you prohibiting you from getting closer. Really what you wanna do is just grab a girl and fuck her. I think that's a lot of what's going on for you. And that until you do that, you're still going to be resisting fighting this part of your mind that's thinking, how can I get closer? How can I get closer? What are the questions? Yeah. We're going to do some exercises where you just escalate really quickly to go through that place of, wow, this is terrifying. Because right now you're feeling the terror or the apprehension. And then you're like keeping yourself outside. Like there's this wall that you're not allowed to pass you're like okay well I'll ask questions from here so you lob the ball over mm. and then she replies and then you're like oh i can return that i can return that one but you're always like sort of lobbing the ball you know yeah Shoom, and it's landing and sometimes you make good jokes and it's like boom you got her with that one but you're still standing behind the net so for you to cross the net and see what it's like good or bad on the other side i think is going to help you with this fear of getting close. It's a fear of getting close. It's keeping you in a place of not uh, letting yourself be yourself. It's keeping you away from aspects of yourself. 